My friends, I love talking to the people over at the College Fix because the stuff that happens on college campuses, you may go, ah, they're all a bunch of crazies on college campuses anyway. But you know those kids grow up one day, and then they're the ones actually running the world, and that's kind of why we are where we're at right now. Joining me now on the KVI Studio Line, the associate editor of the College Fix, Matt Lamb, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me back on. You have this one story I can't get enough of. So basically, a group is now mad because a ton of students, when they were asked to fill out one of these gender identity studies, identified as Apache attack helicopters? Exactly. So there was a group of researchers out of Oregon State University, and they were working on a survey, like you said, about gender identity and engineering culture. Um, but when they sent out this survey that I think was forwarded through different professors and, and deans and such, uh, a handful of engineering students responded to uh, their questions, including just some basic demographic information about their gender, and listed uh, their gender as Apache attack helicopter or B-22 Osprey and other you know, airplane related <laughs> answers. And, and some of the people also gave fairly long uh, uh, answers. Um, I think one person said their race was Native American and then in parentheses wrote Elizabeth Warren. So they, they really wrote a lot of uh, just sort of silly answers and uh, and that that drew the ire of these of these scholars. Now I don't know why anybody would pick an osprey because in my personal mind there is nothing better than an Apache attack helicopter. In fact, I know Sir Patrick Stewart agrees with me. Now, if there's one thing you can be sure of, it's that nothing is more powerful than a young boy's wish, except an Apache helicopter. An Apache helicopter has machine guns and missiles. It is an unbelievably impressive complement of weaponry, an absolute death machine. I got to say, Matt, I don't know if I'd rather have him or Morgan Freeman narrate my life. I don't know which way it goes. It's a toss up, my man. How about you? Uh, exactly. I'd probably go with Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> Those are great. Okay. So looking at this study, it horribly, horribly backfired. But do you think the fact that so many kids, I mean, I assume this was a nationwide survey or was this just an Oregon survey? I think it was to, to, to like a handful of engineering um, schools, professors uh, across the country. And uh, and these were some of the responses that, uh, that that were received. I don't think it was just in that state. Gotcha. So do you think that the tide is turning? Do you think the pushback is coming when so many people aren't afraid to do this and they're just like, ah, screw it, I'm going to write this thing, but also the power of that joke that so many people use the same one? Well, I do think it, you know, it, it shows that at least in some departments, people still have a sense of humor. You know, unfortunately, if they had sent this to the sociology department, I don't think there would have been as much pushback. Uh, engineers in general tend to be a little more conservative. But in fact, actually, if you ask the scholars if there's a trend, what they actually said is that this, these responses, people just kind of being maybe kind of rude, boorish, whatever, but funny in my opinion. They actually said that this is just one small component of a broader fascist base that's building in the United States. So, you know, these answers, it's basically the next step is, you know, fascist training training camps to attack trans people, if you ask these, these professors. Well, if you guys don't ask dumb questions, you're not going to get dumb answers. <laughs> We're talking with Matt Lamb, who's the associate editor over at the College Fix. And that's not the only crazy thing happening in college. As I understand it, you guys have an expose coming out talking about Chesa Boudin. You might remember him, got recalled and thrown out on his butt from San Francisco, former George Soros prosecutor sponsored attorney out there the district attorney and now he's teaching other kids about law is that what's going on exactly so at the college fix we cover how bill Ayers adopted son um he after he was apparently too liberal for san francisco voters um you know, he got booted out of office a couple of years ago in a recall election. And then he was hired at the University of California, Berkeley's law school to run this new legal clinic. And we asked the dean of law school, Erwin Shemerinsky, fairly well-known person, you know, what, what, what interested you about him? And he said that he has extensive experience as a public defender, as well as having been a prosecutor. And he also told us that he has written, Boone has written thoughtfully about many aspects of the criminal justice system. Now, one group we talked to that wasn't too happy about getting hired was um, Richie Greenberg, who led the recall uh, group. And he, he basically said that Boone was a, a failure, a blemish on Berkeley, and uh, we shouldn't even call him a prosecutor because he was a complete failure as a prosecutor. Wow. Absolutely wow. But just the fact that still taxpayer dollars are going to pay for this guy. I mean, this is a college that is takes public and private funds, right? 
Exactly. There's actually a trend of failed Democratic politicians, liberal politicians, landing jobs in higher ed. Lori Lightfoot, the mayor of Chicago, is teaching as a public health fellow at Harvard. Um, Robert O'Rourke and Tim Ryan, who I think have lost five elections between themselves in the past like three election cycles, were political fellows at the University of Chicago. So basically, as I wrote actually at the Washington Examiner, if you're a failed Democrat politician, don't worry because you can always find a job in higher ed, right? Those who can't do teach. You know, so the line about those who can't do teach, for me personally, being married to a teacher, having taught before, I don't think it's those who can't do teach. I think it's those who can't teach, teach college. That's what I think. You know, it seems like. Or teach Jim, as, uh, <laughs> yes. as Jack Black said in uh, there you cool go. Exactly right. In the last few minutes we have with our friend Matt Lamb over from the College Fix. You have this other article about our former president, Donald Trump. Apparently he's a threat to the LGBTQ plus IA divided side amper stamp community. Yeah, so in the same journal that published the Apache Attack Helicopter paper, uh, this is the Bulletin of Applied Transgender Studies out of Northwestern University, there was a study where they talked to 158 LGBT, all the, all the people, um, individuals. They recruited them online through community groups, and they asked them how they felt about Trump's election in 2016, the 2020 election, and then this proposal in 2018 to codify into law, federal law, the male-female uh, sex binary, which has been recognized through basically throughout all of human history. It's in, you know, chapter one, I think, or chapter two of Genesis, right, pretty early on, um, which they called, you know, this, he was going to rigidly define sex. And apparently this was causing anguish and hopelessness for these LGBT individuals, which in my opinion, sort of maybe questions, you know, if they're in the right frame of mind to make life altering decisions about their, their bodies, if the election of sort of, you know, maybe bombastic center, right, moderate, uh, you know, loudmouth Manhattan real estate developer is causing them to have such uh, emotional and mental health problems. Unbelievable. I mean, having grown up in New York, Donald Trump was just part of the culture there. His his showmanship, his personality, everything like that, which is why I never thought he would win. And then I was surprised when he did entertain when he did really loved his policies.